are you guys? Get rid of this. Good to see you guys on this wonderful Friday. All right, what's up, Victoria? Good to see you. Karen? Good to see you as well. Make that a little bigger. Tiffany, what's up? Awesome. So good to see you guys. Paul Mitchell, the school rally. Sterling, good to see you. Very cool. So what's up, guys? Welcome to today's class. Let's see if uh, I think I got this right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, good to see you as well. All right, cool. So what we're going to do today, guys, we're going to have some fun. We're going to cut some hair. Um, one of the things that I wanted to work on with you guys today is cutting a disconnected pixie, uh, which should be a lot like, you know, should be fun, creative. We're going to use a clipper today. So uh, speed things up a little bit. I want to show you guys kind of a salon reality uh, disconnected pixie. I'm going to show you guys my inspiration photos here. So this is the first one. Uh, thing I like most about this image was uh, that it has that disconnection. I like the really short feel to it. So I want to go in and do that and then create that messy texture on top. So I'm excited to, to show you guys that. And then the other is this one. This one's a little sleeker. Um, doesn't have quite as much of a messy texture. Actually, let me I'm gonna move this one here and let me show you both and we'll compare. So to me, both very similar haircuts, but the biggest thing that I'm gonna do to kind of break down both of them is I'm gonna cut the sides with the clipper. I think that'll speed things up. You could cut it in your fingers if you want to. Some people prefer that. Um, I'm kind of, I go both ways on that. I'm not really committed to one or the other, depending on my time and really what the look is. For me, this is a clean cut look. So um, I think I can use the clipper really easily and work through the haircut that way. And then we're gonna use the disconnect. Um, also pick this because I'm very excited to, uh, show you guys today, my new Velcro clips that are available on the shop. So we're going to be using those to separate the hair. Uh, I'll show you guys the benefits of that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, I uh, hope you guys are excited about this. Let's see, I'm gonna make these go away. We'll reference back to those photos as we go. Um, this isn't really the woke up this way show. We're kind of doing that on Tuesdays now, but, uh, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm just here to film a YouTube video and I figured I'd do it live with you guys so I can answer your questions. So if you're new uh, to watching me on the internet, then just put new in the chat, I'd love to see that. And if you're an OG, you've been watching for a long time, post that in the chat as well. Um, happy Friday. All right, all right, let's see. All right, cool, I think we're, uh, we're good. So let's uh, get to the mannequin, all right. So one thing I want you guys to uh, kind of take a look at is that we're starting off with a shorter uh, overall picture to work with. Um, if they had longer hair, obviously you could section that up in a way. Maybe I would even go in wet and start cutting that if it was a little bit longer. Um, I wanted to transform what is kind of a connected pixie, short, short bob look. And now we're gonna take it really nice and short with lots of texture. So um, let me see here. So the first thing I want to do is focus on sectioning. I'm going to pop over to this camera view here. Zoom in. There we go. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my section. Now, uh, key things with this is to make sure that you don't section too low because if you section too low and you cut that disconnect, then you're going to have these pieces wanting to constantly fall into uh, your guest's face. So I kind of brush the hair over and I look at what hair wants to fall to the side. And then I might take that out or that'll be just underneath where I section just because I want that little bit of a disconnected feel. Uh, but again, don't go too low on the sectioning. Grab a comb. All right, so. There we go. All right, cool. Good to see all the new people in the chat. Awesome. And the old. Not an age. All right. So the other thing, a lot of people get confused on what kind of line to take. I like to follow the round of the head. So we're gonna work our way around just like that and section everything off. Um, let me get myself angled right. 
So now I'm going to draw my line just under parietal ridge and comb this hair up and over. Now here's the beauty of these new clips. The reason I wanted to get them on the shop is that I can just take the clip just like this and I just push it into the hair, slide it a tiny bit and it holds the hair really, really well and none of the hair falls out and it holds a bigger section at a time. So pretty cool uh, little invention. I didn't invent it, but it's cool. All right, so we got our section there. Now I'm gonna create a section just working diagonal back on the hair. So just like this. I'm gonna take that again because I wasn't recording. And you know, this is about you guys, but it's also about recording. <laughs> Gotta have a video later as well. All right, so again, comb over, work the round of the head just under parietal ridge, comb the hair over nice and tight like that and then take your velcro clip push it in the hair and just slide it a bit and it holds the hair right in place so there we go just like that now i'm going to work uh backwards as well some of you ogs in the chat are going to notice some new music today updated the music different vibes all right so back and i'm going to work the round of the head again so we work up and then over and down, following the round of the head. Take this, comb it over, slide in the clip, just like that, and hold the hair back. So now we've got our hair sectioned off as much as I need at this point, and I'm gonna go in with my clipper. We're going to be using uh, this Fabulous Gold Clipper uh, to do our work. Uh, some of you guys are asking about the clip already. Let me post, uh, you can get it on shopfse.com. So just go there and look at the clips and you'll find it. Um, all right. So now I'm gonna choose to use a four guard to start this. Now this might just be to take out the bulk, um, but I'm gonna work and just go up to the, to the top here, right at this parietal ridge area. And I'm just gonna rock out just a tiny bit because I want to build up a slight weight line in this haircut. So go here, zoom in as much as I can, just like that. Got my comb, so I'll comb the hair down, and now I'm just going to work and remove. So I'm just working straight up the head and then rocking out right at the end of that section. So again, this is a four guard and it's closed. So instead of it being a four guard with its longest uh, point, it's closed like that. So it's at the shortest point. All right. All right, guys, I'm just working the same. Flipper all the way back. So I'm building this weight line right here, right along the edge. There we go. All right, now we're gonna section off the opposite side. The other cool thing about these Velcro clips is they don't pull the hair at all, so. Don't be worried. All right. All right, so just like this. Now let's go here. So again, under parietal ridge, following the round of the head. Comb the rest of the hair down. that take your velcro clip push it in slide it just a little bit hold the hair steady same thing here diagonal back parting following the round of the head comb the hair out of the way <laughs> stick to my 
shirt like I wanted it to there. Comb it back. In the hair, slide it a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna work, same thing. Clipper up, rock it out when I get towards the round of the head up here. Just like this through. Move some of this bulk there. So I just flick my wrist when I get to the top, right around the round, just to leave a little weight line. And now I'm not really worried about this crown area. I'm just taking this, some of this bulk out because I'm gonna go in and cut it with my scissors uh, after this, so. Here. So now I'm going to go right along parietal ridge. Get a better section here. And now I'm just gonna work up to that occipital bone area with the clipper. So her down just a little. So just like this. And then up at the occipital bone, you rock out at that point as well. Now we'll do more detail work later, but this was just getting the bulk out of it. And now what I'm gonna do is wet down the top so that we can start some wet cutting uh, throughout this process here. And if you guys have questions, uh, remember, just type Q and put a question in uh, and I will make sure that I go through and answer those as soon as we get through it. So if you have a question, post that in the comments and then I'm gonna wet the head down right now and then I'll answer some questions before I move into the wet cut. So here we go. I'm going to do this. Let's see where we're at. All right. New comments. There we go. Remember guys, make sure you put Q and then your question so I can find it. I'm looking for Qs. And those of you guys that are just tuning in, I wanna share with you guys what we're doing here. Oh, besides breaking things, we are working on cutting this style of a pixie cut like a disconnected pixie um good morning today post this clip on instagram matt i'll see I, sometimes i these classes are too long i can't put them on instagram all right thank you very much thank you all right let me see i got the pattern there all right cool All right, guys, why don't you post in the chat where you're watching from? That's always exciting. Let me see where you guys are at. You can put your couch, too, if you don't want to share where you live. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the front and the back on this haircut. Let me pop over to this camera. So 
what I'll do is I'll start combing everything over to one side. Oh. And I'm basically going to go from hairline to hairline. We talk about this a lot. Hairline to hairline all the way across. Let me go overhead view on this so you can see. So right here, this is all ear to ear. So we're going just back from the ear to the hairline. And I'm going to go hairline to hairline just like that. Comb the back to the back and the front to the front. And then, so that I don't keep this hair in my guest's face, I'm going to part straight down the center for now and then just separate those two. And then if you wanted to clip it out of her face, you could do that as well, depending on the situation. All right, let's pop back over here. And now we're gonna work in the back first. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna cut a round shape following the round of the head. So let me... Do this. So I'm gonna comb everything back. Now I don't really want this back to be dis disconnected and what I noticed about this image here, oh, what? that's so small, that's hilarious, um, is that her back is not disconnected. Some people like that. Uh, for me today, I'm going to um, blend the back and then just get a more extreme disconnection towards the front. So now I'm going to show you guys. Oh, I think it's my uh, mouse does this. There we go. All right. Let me hide it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work diagonal back, like I said, and we're going to kind of blend all of this in. So I want to still stick with that weight line. So that weight line that we created with the clipper, that's my guideline from underneath. I want to start building weight pretty quickly into this crown area. So my, uh, my elevation is going to be nice and low as I work through this section. Let me see if I can show you this without blocking you. So just like this, I can see my guideline underneath like that. And so I'm just going to go through and point cut is now most of this work that I'm gonna be doing is gonna be point cutting because I'm trying to put some texture into this cut. So point cutting through, that's not the best view for you guys. So now you can see that weight line starting to grow. Um, let me go to the other side, see if you can see better. Okay, so like that, diagonal back, and I'm still bringing it to that same point, just slightly elevated a bit more. I think it's just really awareness of how low your elevation is and what you're trying to achieve with that weight. So if you want even more length or more weight, then you obviously can drop that elevation even lower. So now it's starting to free up a little bit. Diagonal back, bring it just a little bit higher than that last section. Point cut through. I'm gonna go overhead. Zoom in for you guys. Come on, guy. You can do it. Oh, there you go. There you go. Come on, there you go. This wasn't close enough. All right. So now you should be able to see a little better. Check the point cutting. So I'm working. Now watch my finger angle start to dip towards the head because I want to take it a little shorter in this center point. I want that to blend more. 
there's still going to be a little weight line I'm going to cut off in the back here, but it's looking good. It's looking like I want it. And still, all this is coming over here. And now I'm just really cutting. I'm going to go back and cut this on the opposite side, taking off some of this length here. All right. So now I'm going to work diagonal back the opposite direction. So now we're going to work back this way. This you should be able to see easily. So now my guide comes from the weight line I made on the opposite side. So it's right there. And this is pretty low elevation. And then it'll get higher from this point up. Yep, like that. And now this gets over directed and then slightly elevated just a bit more. Recomb. Diagonal back, and you just keep taking these sections, and then you'll eventually run out of hair. There's not much left to cut. So you just keep a little bit higher each time, maybe quarter of an inch higher. Again, depending on what your outcome that you want is. And now I bring the rest of the hair over and there's this tiny, that's the other one. Tiny piece. So you can see that longest point is in the middle. And that's where I want. I wanted to build up a little weight in that crown area. And now I'm gonna disconnect so this is going to be my new guide here. And I'm going to bring everything back to that point all the way through the top. So it's going to come, all this is going to come back to here. And just keep coming back. All right, let's see. All right, let's see if you guys have any questions here. Cool, cool. Thank you for watching. So awesome. What's up? How long does it take you to master this? Still working on it, Elizabeth. Still working on it. The thought is, if you ever master something, then it gets boring. Because... Because then you got nothing to learn, right? Lots of friends in Scotland today. Good to see you guys. Cool, 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 cool. All right, I'm new to the chat. Bobby, welcome. All right, very cool. All right, so now we're gonna work this top section. Like I said, we built, we built our lengths in the back. So this top point here is then be, gonna become our guide. We're gonna work our way from the front to the back, over directing it to a stationary guide, using point cutting and also using more of a triangular shape when we go to cut it. So it's gonna be um, more at an angle, longest point in the very center of the hair. So let me see if I pop over here, we're gonna go overhead and then I'll show you the front angle as well as we go through it. Which clipper did you use in the beginning? So this clipper right here, this is the Babyliss Pro uh, or Babyliss. I'm not sure how you pronounce that word. <laughs> um, but I really love this clipper. And the one, one of the biggest reasons I love it is because this thing right here, the uh, arm on the clipper, it locks into each place. So on some clippers, like uh, you might wanna just do it half open or like a half close of the blade, right? And if I wanted to do that on another clipper, it's kind of hard to guide it. Uh, to know exactly where you were. So just being able to click that. And then also uh, the guards, it, I mean, you can get a one and a half guard with pretty much every clipper, but it comes with one, which was really nice as well. And it's gold, so, which is always good. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thanks guys. I can see your chat. from here. All right. So here we go. So vertical section here, we'll call it vertical. 
Thank you, whoever bought something. I see it on my, my watch. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take my section up, and my guide will come from underneath. But again, it's going to be cutting short to long. So short to long up there. So right through. Got my guide. And now I'm going to point cut my line. Now, some of you may feel when you first start this initial guide how that it might feel a little short. It's not too short because we're going to overdirect everything to that point. And when you do that, it definitely gets a lot longer. So, uh, so don't be afraid of cutting it a little shorter than you're comfortable. There we go. Let me bring that back to us just like that. Thing here, I'm gonna show you guys straight on. You can see that angle. Over directed to the stationary guide. Oh, can't see that. You guys liking the new music? Carly can't hear it. She doesn't know how much grooves I have in my head right now. So longest point. And I'll probably cut into this later, but I always like to leave a little extra length if I can, because you never know when you might want that length for the overall look. Just combing at the base, straight back to me. Point cut. All right, Ben, what is the difference between, I'm um, going to say diagonal and a horizontal section? Let's see if I can find that question to put up. There it is, Ben. Um, section that you cut for the end result shape. So the biggest thing for, for diagonal, and I saw Adele answer this question, which I'm super proud of because um, I don't know if she could have answered that question before she did our virtual hands-on stuff. And we uh, went over a lot of this. So a diagonal, a diagonal line, when you're cutting, you're holding both vertical and horizontal at the same time. So you tend to get more control of certain sections when you're working, uh, especially with the round of the head. Because if I was gonna cut a round section and try to follow the round of the head vertically, I'd have to be very careful with making sure that every single section that I brought out came directly out from the head and it didn't waver from that. The other thing is I could cut it horizontally and I wouldn't have any trouble with you know that consistency there, but I would have more or inconsistencies up and down. So when you go diagonal, you got both in your hand, so you're just you're better off with getting uh, a more consistent shape in your cut. Hopefully that makes sense, Ben. Let's see here. Why are you point cutting? So Jessica, that's a great question as well. I'm point cutting to soften and create texture. So if you look at the end result of this cut that we're going for, move her over here, um, it's very textured. So all through this top part, uh, there's a ton of texture in it. So, so funny, why is it doing that? Um, oh, I can just do that with my finger. Look at that. Um, so that's really why. So the, all the texture that's happening in that part of the cut, I want to go in and point cut because I'm just saving myself work later. I would go in and do that dry no matter what. So there's really no reason to go in and cut a blunt line and then have to shatter it later. So uh, just time-saving techniques throughout. All right, so let's go. It's an original. So same thing. Section back to the stationary guide. And point cut to create a soft one.
So those of you guys that have some of those like deeper questions, we have a group that meets on Mondays. Um, it's, it is a paid group, but it's small and it's through Zoom and I watch you guys cutting hair. So all I have to do is purchase a mannequin and get a ticket and then you can be a part of that class. Uh, we have another group starting uh, at the beginning of October. So uh, just go to shop FSE and you can get tickets there. But it's really fun. And those of you guys that are in this class right now that are part of that virtual, you can let them know. But uh, we're having a good time over there, cutting hair together. So just finishing up point cutting. Now, look how long this is going to be in the front. That's not going to be my end result at all. But the texture and the layers through here are. And then I'm going to cut into that front. Uh, those of you guys that watch me cut hair quite often uh, probably know that I leave a lot of length in the front because that's a totally different haircut for me. Um, as I go through it, I'm going to uh, adjust it, create texture, do different things, probably more in the dry cut portion of it. So now I'm going to stand in front of my guest when I cut this side because I, I still want to be cutting short to long. So instead of crazy, getting crazy body positioning here, so like I cut everything over here nice and easy, right? Bring everything back. But now I got to go like this and now I got to try to cut and I'm going to cut long to short. So I want to just shift myself in front, wear a mask and uh, don't cough and just work your sectioning just like this back. So I see my guide right there and I'm going to work that again with point cutting. go and that's where the disconnection starts to happen guys so we connected it right here in the back but then everything from that point on is going to be a little bit longer than this and it's going to be then a lot longer than this just keep disconnecting throughout the cut The other thing is in these live streams, the, the beauty of the virtual classes is I can hear you guys keep asking stuff, but I can't read it all and do this at the same time. So in the Zooms, you use your voice and we talk to each other. Uh, and you can even talk to me while I'm cutting. So it just, it's a lot easier, but again, you can't get as many people in there. So um, just another benefit. But I am trying to watch. Points, chop up hair, please do a cut that you don't have to razor point. So many different cuts, sides not even. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Patricia. Not sure. Oh, wrong one. Uh, trendier cuts tend to have a uh, little bit, you know, softer feel. There's no reason to cut hard lines when you're creating this this kind of look. I mean, you could, but it would just have a different feel to it. Um, so having some texture stuff makes a lot more sense. All right, a couple more sections, and we're gonna blow dry, and then I'll show you some dry cutting stuff, and we will finish it up. section straight back all right so now you'll start to see as I comb this forward you can see that disconnection uh, obviously once I start cutting into this stuff more dry it'll start to really form what that haircut is. But you can see how that body and buildup in the crown is already happening. So we really just have to work on this front now. And obviously the sides will detail a lot more. So, all right, so we're gonna blow dry here. See, I got my Minerva blow dryer over here. Also gold, coincidence. 
I don't think so. All right. So here we go. So we're going to blow dry. So Lynn, I have level two classes already posted on the website. So if you, so the one we're doing the fundamentals, that's when you're done with that, you can do the level two classes that are posted up there. All right. So here we go. Let's blow dry. Let's put some blow dry tunes on. There we go. This will be better. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> oh boy, Friday, Friday, all right, so we've got nice short sides, disconnected top throughout, we've got still tons of hair to cut into, excited about that, I'm going to grab a dry cutting scissor, so here we go, dry cutting, so difference between dry cutting scissor and a wet cutting scissor is that the blade is a lot thicker. You can see, dry cutting, wet cutting. Um, it's thicker. It has a different bevel to the edge of it, so it slides through the hair. This one really grips the hair. It doesn't feel like it slides through the hair uh, because it's meant to cut precision lines. This one uh, is meant to just glide, slide through the hair. The one problem with doing it, everything with one scissor is that it'll start to dull this one faster than this one. So this one's kind of meant to go through that dry hair uh, and you just don't want to have to sharpen your scissors too often. So, so I got my dry cutting scissor and what I'm going to do is I'm going to section some of this hair away and I'm going to do this little by little throughout the cut. So um, let me see here. So just like this, I'll go over here in section so you guys can see it easier. So right here, I'm gonna comb around the round of the head. Now this is the disconnected area. So this is what I'm gonna focus on first, not all this bulk over here. So I section just above parietal ridge and then across the top and I let that hair kind of fall over. 
Now the rest of the hair I'm gonna comb over here, out of her face, and then I'll take our Velcro clip and I'll put it in the hair and then just slide it down and over to hold that hair out of the way for me. And then I can go in and do my slide cutting throughout this section. So we're gonna do a lot of pinching and sliding. So this is the, this is the technique. You pinch the hair where you feel like you wanna take some weight out of it. Then you take your scissor and you put it into the blade. You kind of pull it up into it and then a half close just like this and you'll work that scissor through just like that. What that'll do is start to create a kind of short to long feeling which will take some of the weight out of that section and then it'll also take length if you go all the way through. So you you kind of uh, have, have the ability to determine what you want that to be like. So let me go here. I'm looking at these disconnects. So I want some disconnection, right? But I just don't need it to be super long throughout. And let's look at our, our uh, inspiration photo here. So these pieces right around her recession point, um, which you guys might be able to see, let me point to it. <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do ever. Okay, right. Right, yeah, right over there, like above, like this point up here. So that's her recession point. I guess I could have showed it right here on this. <laughs> Friday mistake. So she's nice and short through here and then these pieces get disconnected but they're still long, but they're just hanging right over her eye. So I don't wanna take it too short uh, as we start to make this thing come to life here. So here's her eye, so just a little bit. Slide cutting. You can see it starting to come. Here we go. Yes. The one random YouTube comment where she's like, she can see now. <laughs> yes, she can. Yes, she can. All right, here we at? Oh, it's looking good. Did you see, on. getting there all right next section how easy that comes out how easy it sticks to your sleeve all right we'll go over here. right over just like that so I'm gonna just take another round section I'll get a better shot of that for you guys All right, so I comb everything over just in that flow, and then I draw my line around, and I comb some of that hair out. That's gonna be my next target. And I take my Velcro clip here, and we'll slide it down into the hair, hold it in place. Velcro clips are my new favorite, for sure. They just work so good. All right, Let's see where we're at. And notice I haven't smoothed it or anything yet because I'm not, uh, I wanna do that at the end. I really wanna see what her natural texture is doing. So this is gonna be a lot more bulk removal to start. So again, half open, half closed, but I'm really working through it to get it shorter.
you guys are enjoying this class, just give me a thumbs up in the uh, in the chat. I appreciate it. So now we're starting to work that shape in, but it's still a little bulky. So what I'll do is I'll either go in like this and just slide half open, half close and create that pieciness in the haircut or something fun you can do as well. Or a little safer version of it is I got a Mizutani uh, Acro Leaf Wide scissor right here. Uh, there we go. So I, like that. And I can just take this in and just kind of take out the bulk that way through it. But I would still do my half open, half close through it to get the length where I want it. And then just to soften a little extra, go in with your uh, texture, texture blade. So just like that. All right. Where we are. So last little bit. You see, it's already coming together. Not much to do on this piece. I like the length here. All right, I see your thumbs up. Thank you guys. All right, a little texture scissor here. cut into this piece. All right. So now one thing I want to do is just, so we had so much hair at the beginning. And obviously if you guys were here at the beginning, you saw me clipper through this, I clippered real quick, right? So I uh, didn't really put much consistency in it. I just got the bulk out of it. So what I want to do now is just go through and really fine tune a couple of those edges. Cause if you think about it in the salon, this would have taken me no time whatsoever to get to where we're at. Um, it was just a quick cut through and then we cut the back and uh, tr we traveled that guide, but then we had a stationary guide on top. So a lot of really simple stuff. So now if I just comb her hair over like that, put my clip in, I'm not worried about the top cause the top's pretty much there. Now I just want to work the edges with my clipper, still using that four guard. So you guys can see that there. And now I'm just gonna close, or I think I had it closed in the beginning, so. Closed up. And I'm just gonna fine tune it. So I'm not going shorter, just making sure it all looks nice before I move on. Okay. Those of you guys saying that you love the cut, thank you for that. Let me see. I don't want to cut into that disconnect. I like that. So just kind of comb that up out of the way. You could clip it too. I'm not even going up there. Rock right at that occipital bone. Good. I'm gonna do the same thing all the way around. Now we're gonna go T trimmer real quick around the edges. 
and this C trimmer. Create a little nice little lines through there. Now, I always like to hit it with a blow dryer. Let me turn my mic down. Coming back. Coming back. So that's cool. So now I'm going to cut some more texture in here. Can never have too much texture. So a quick little point cut into that center. So we, we created a longer center in this cut. So you can see short. So, oh, you can't see. So you can see shorter to longer. It's obviously all shattered up. I don't want to take away that shorter or that longer length in the middle, but I want to cut shorter pieces into this haircut. I'm going to show you guys a couple other texturizing techniques as well. Over direct this back and going very vertical with my blade so that I don't take uh, too much length, or I really don't take any length, I just take out weight. Another fun texturizing technique I like to use is just to take my scissor. So I'll comb the hair down, straight down towards the front, and then I'll go in at a diagonal and I'll just half close and create channels in the short hair. So you can see kind of like those channels that happen. I'll do the same thing the opposite way. We'll slide through. Okay. And then the last little bit, I'm gonna pop on my smoothing iron here. And I'm just gonna iron the front pieces and make sure I'm exactly where I want with those. Uh, but I want texture in this cut, so I'm not trying to straighten too much of it and I'm not gonna take any of this texture away throughout the top here. It's working through the front. The longest part, you wanna smooth it out just a little bit, just to polish it, not to really straighten it too much. Actually, gonna make that piece go out a little bit like that. Same thing in the back here. I'll just smooth a couple pieces. I feel good about it. You guys feel good? All right. Here we go. Let's let's. Do the final look. So I'm gonna use Paul Mitchell Mitch Clean Cut. The thing I love about this product, I know they would market it towards guys, but it's a cream based product. So it gives me that texture and hold, but it's not like uh, 
too thick, too waxy. So I'm gonna run this in my hands. And I'll just kind of use my fingertips in the hair, but I wanna to start to kind of scrunch it up and let some of this texture kind of come to life. I can actually grab these little pieces. Angela, I'm gonna show you the back for sure. I can't show you the back, I screwed it up. Just kidding. <laughs> Pay no attention to the back. So that's, this is that weight that we created by our lower elevation. So it pops some height into this crown area, which is, in my opinion, like kind of a needed thing um, just to make the shape look nice. Otherwise it looks really flat back here. You can see that disconnect. All right, let's see our bow toe next to it. You tilt her head down like that one. You guys are liking it. That's pretty close. All right, cool. Hope you guys like it. All right. So, 
What do you guys think? Oh, always sweating by the end. We put it down today. Looks better than the picture. I'll take that. Thanks, Jennifer. put on the wrong side all right very cool very cool all right so Adele's asking do you need a a new mannequin for the level two classes so one thing let me let me share with you guys real quick uh, I'll show you the classes. I'm going to put this up. Oh. Let's go to shopfse.com. So right here, right on the front page. So we've got level one classes. Basically what that is, is a, um, uh, it's a fundamentals. It's four weeks. It's $99. So, um, but the cool thing about it is it's over zoom. So you guys buy a mannequin. So you just find a mannequin wherever you are. Cause this is worldwide. Um, and then we meet every Monday or no, it's every Tuesday on this one, every Tuesday from 11 to 12 o'clock, uh, Eastern standard time. And we cut hair together and I walk you through my fundamental thoughts of hair cutting for four weeks. And then you kind of advance to the level two classes. If you already feel like you could do the level two, you can do that as well. But um, then the level two classes, you do need a new mannequin. So Adele and uh, Lynn, I see you guys in the chat. Uh, you do need a new mannequin for those classes. Unfortunately, those are like, unless you have uh, a longer hair mannequin still, but you want to be able to layer it and you want to be able to put bangs on it. And then for the other level two, you need, uh, those are kind of like, you need a mannequin for those classes. So that's why they're not priced crazy. But I would tell you guys, uh, through my experience over the last two weeks with the group um, on Mondays as we're meeting, uh, it's the best experience I've probably had in hands-on classes because I can see all of them working at the same exact time and we can work through issues and you know, it's just, it's the best way to do it and you don't have to leave your place. So it's pretty cool. So if you guys wanna be a part of it, check it out, 99 bucks. Uh, for the four week, which is, you know, only 25 bucks a class. And then uh, the level twos are $50. It's one class. Um, but those are, those are more uh, geared towards technique specific looks like layers and bangs and face frames and that, that sort of thing. Um, so that's that. And then if you guys want to pick up any of the tools that you saw today in the class, please check out our website, shop FSE. It's right here. Um, you can go to the clip section. We have these new Velcro clips that I used today. Uh, you can buy those or five bucks for a pack of two or 10 bucks for a pack of six. Um, I would get the 10, or I would get the six pack because, um, you can use them all over the head and put them on your shirts. If you want, you can do whatever you want. Um, and then we also have the scissors I used everything, uh, razors, combs, clips, everything, uh, the brushes I used, everything I used on the class, you'll, you'll be able to find on there. They're all my favorite things. So that is that. Let me uh, escape out of this full page here, get back to my camera. There we go. Boom. So, well, I always offer this. Victoria, that's a great question. Um, I, I think so. I think this is, uh, personally, like I said, um, even when doing hands-on classes, my, my, uh, biggest pet peeve of it was you have to sell enough tickets for it to be worth it. But then at the same time, if there's 25 people in a room, I've got to walk around and my attention is on one person at a time. And as I'm working around, it's just very difficult to see everyone with this. I see everybody on my screen in front of me and I'm watching you guys all cutting hair and I can assess your situation right away um, so much easier than I could when I was trying to walk around the room. So I'm gonna continue to do these virtual classes um, throughout this year and next year. Um, I'm probably even gonna get more dates going, but I like to see, you know, I like to get them sold before I put out more, obviously. So um, I'd love for any of you guys to be a part of it. It would be really awesome. 
Um, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a really fun experience because uh, we get to meet each other, you know. I get to actually see people. And you don't have to cut hair during the class. Some people don't. They just sit there and watch, and they ask questions. Um, it's just a lot easier. So thank you, Lynn. Appreciate that. Um, I'm grabbing the Velcro clips. That's right. Thank you. Anise, you can tell them how much you like the classes too. Super fun. Um, and then you can rewatch it. Yeah. So, uh, and you'll get all the classes sent to you. Like if you can't make one of them, it's always sent to you later, but it's obviously good to be there. Um, it's, that's what it's all about. So if you guys want to pick up the Velcro clips, they're on the shop, please go check it out. Shop FSE. Um, and we're definitely going to do So I got my Zoom people on Monday. So I'll be with you guys that are part of that group. And then Tuesday, we'll be back here live uh, doing some classes. Stuff all over me. I'll be back here live Tuesday doing classes again. Uh, so let me know in the chat what you guys want to see on Tuesday. I'll start putting that together as well. All right, cool. You guys are awesome. Any other questions? Thanks, Kim. All right, cool. All right, I'm glad you guys liked it. All right, I'll see you guys. There we go. It's going to be a great see ya. day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it.